Okay, so next is 1.5, Domain Eukarya, Kingdom Plantae. So for the first learning outcome is state the unique characteristics of Plantae. State the classification of Plantae into four groups. State the unique characteristics of each of the groups. And describe the evolutionary relationship in Kingdom Plantae. So for the unique characteristics of Kingdom Plantae is that the uh, it is a land plants and only a few are aquatics. Okay, uh, has cuticle to reduce the water loss untuk mengelakkan daripada over transpirasi berlaku. Okay, has stomata for gases exchange. So, uh, as we know, plants ni important untuk menukarkan gas. Uh, okay, dalam for proses fotosintesis pun dia penting juga. Okay, so untuk uh, another unique characteristics of the plantae is that it is multicellular eukaryotic okay, organisms. And its mode of nutrition is of course autotrophic or photosynthetic, uh, which means it can make its own food. Okay, and because of that, it has chlor chlorophyll A dan juga B. Okay, then bila dia dah menjalankan proses photosynthesis, it will store the food in the form of starch. Okay, so then dia mempunyai cell wall yang terdiri daripada selulose dan juga pectin. Alright, and its habitat is usually on land and sah uh, few sahaja lah yang dekat aquatic macam saya cakap tadi. And has alteration, alternation of generation. So, what is alternation of generation? It comes from the word alternate. Okay, berubah. Okay, so it's a life cycle which involves the alternation between two multicellular bodies which consists of sporophyte. Dan juga gametophyte generation. Okay, maksudnya uh, sporophyte dengan gametophyte generation ni akan berubah-ubah. Okay, dia akan mengikut giliran which takes turn to produce one another during the life cycle. So, the sporophyte and gametophyte uh, is a different morphology tau. Bentuk dia berlainan. Morphology ni maksudnya bentuk. Okay, so maksudnya bentuk sporophyte berbeza dengan bentuk gametophyte. Okay, so this is the life cycle. So here is the life cycle. And here is the sporophyte generation which is to N. Okay, and dia akan bertukar menjadi gametophyte generation which is N. Dan in the process of uh, alternating ni, maksudnya in the process of penukaran ni, dia akan menjalankan proses meiosis lah sebab daripada 2N jadi N. So dia kena undergo proses meiosis. Okay, so bila dah meiosis ni jadi spor lah and then nak banyak-banyakkan dia undergo mitosis. So, daripada gametophyte generation ni, dia akan mengeluarkan gamet. Okay, so gamet akan undergo fertilization untuk menjadi balik zygote yang 2N. Dan lama, uh, dan uh, for after a few process, dia akan menjadi multicellular diploid cells. Okay, so and this cycle will repeat lah sepanjang uh, life of the plant. So, uh, from this, you can say that plants, are, some of them are non-vascular and has va vascular. So, the non-vascular, we can uh, characterize bryophytes punya organisms or groups. And within the uh, plants or the groups that are vascularized, okay, it, we can categorize them into uh, ada ke tak ada seed. Okay, presence of seeds. So, if it, it is seedless, we uh, we group the plant into pteridophytes. Then, kalau dia ada seed, we group the plants into, uh, we classify lah. Kita bahagikan pula yang sama, yang plant yang ada seed tadi tu kepada dua pula. Location of the seed. Whether it is unprotected ataupun protected. Okay, so kalau unprotected, we classify the plants into gymnosperms. And if it, the plant is has uh, seeds that are protected by ovary, it is called angiosperms. So from here, we can say that kingdom plantae is divided into four groups. Okay, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. So if, for the next learning outcome is we are going to see the unique characteristics of each of the groups. So for the first one is bryophytes, okay. So it is non-vascular, means it has no xylem. And no phloem. Okay. So, dia tak ada xylem dengan phloem lah. And no true root stems and leaf. Maksud true root stem and leaf ni maksudnya. Plant tu dia tak nampak. Um, 
beza antara root, structure root dia dengan stem dia dengan leaf dia. So, semua ketiga-tiga structure ni seakan-akan sama. Okay, so it has no specialized root, it has no specialized stem, it has no specialized structure of leaves. Uh, so, bentuk dia sama. Okay, and it has no seeds. Okay, because it bears spore. Uh, so, dia uh, dia ada spore lah, dia tak ada seed. And for bryophyte, the gametophyte generation is dominant. Okay, maksudnya, dominant ni adalah maksudnya sporophyte tu, kan dia ada dua generasi kan, gametophyte dengan sporophyte. So, untuk bryophyte, sporophyte dia akan attach pada gametophyte. Dia bergantung kepada gametophyte untuk dia hidup, sporophyte tu hidup. Okay, so bergantung dari segi apa? Bergantung dari segi tempat dia nak melekat. Okay, for this one. And this one uh, bergantung dari segi tempat dia nak mendapatkan makanan. Depend on it for nutrients. Okay, so for bryophyte, ingat gametophyte dia yang dominant over the sporophyte. Okay. And it has one type of spore only, formal spores, and the fertilization is dependent on water. So, untuk bryophytes, dia punya habitat is damp, shady and cold places. And usually, kita ambil sampling ni masa uh, dekat kawasan macam tu, contohnya macam tepi-tepi longkang ataupun most likely dekat Cameron Highland lah, tempat yang damp, shady and cold places. Okay. And it is actually small size. As you can see in this picture, sebenarnya dia kecil je tau. Ha, dia bukan besar macam ni lah. And the plant body consists of talus. Ha, kita tak panggil dia leaf. Kita tak panggil dia stem. Kita panggil dia talus. Ha, okay. So, the talus is a plant body that lacks differentiation. Ha, tak ada differentiation of tissues. Meaning, it doesn't differentiate into uh, roots. It doesn't differentiate into leaves. Ha, so, dia sekali je. And produce sperm having flagella or we can call it as enterozoids. Okay. So, sperm tu ada flagella. Dipanggil sebagai enterozoids. So, untuk contoh bryophytes ni adalah polytrichum sp. So, this is how you write the polytrichum sp. Eh? Underline polytrichum sp must be dot. So, sporophyte generation. Okay, so sporophyte generation is this part here lah. Atas ni. So, ingat tadi bryophyte ni dia punya sporophyte bergantung kepada gametophyte sebab gametophyte dia dominant. Okay, so sporophyte ni will be attached to the gametophyte. And dia akan membekalkan, ni akan membekalkan nutrient lah kepada sporophyte. Okay, so the zygote undergo mitosis to form a sporophyte generation. So, this part here. So, sporophyte remain attached to the female gametophyte. So, dia akan attach pada female gametophyte ni lah untuk uh, pembekalan makanan. So, next is steroidophytes. It has simple vascular tissues. Simple tu maksudnya dia dah ada xylem and phloem tapi dia hanya ada xylem trachit saja. Manakala kalau dia ada phloem, dia ada sieve tube saja. Okay, dia tak ada um, companion cell. Ha, tu dia tak ada. Okay. Has true roots, stems and leaves. Okay, so untuk ini kita dah nampak beza antara roots, stem dengan leaf. Kalau tadi sekali structure dia, ha, ni dah ada asing-asing-asing. Okay, so this one no seeds. Okay, so it bears spores lagi. Sama macam bryophytes tadi. Sporophyte generation is dominant. Okay, so now the sporophyte is dominant. Kalau tadi bryophyte, the gametophyte is dominant. So, maksudnya kalau sporophyte dominant, gametophyte tu akan bergantung lah kepada dominant ni. Eh, pada sporophyte tu. Okay. So, gametophyte uh, protellus is free living. Maksudnya dia tak bergantung pada sporophyte. Dan juga independent lah. Ha, kenapa dia independent? Sebab dia berwarna hijau. So, it can undergo photosynthesis sebenarnya. Ha, so, it can provide its own nutrients. Ha, it doesn't have to be dependent on the sporophyte. Ha, itu je. Tapi, kata dominant. So, ini dia bergantung. The gametophyte bergantung pada sporophyte hanya untuk uh, for the attachment je lah. Ha, macam tu. Okay. And sporophyte ni is a long leaf. Lagi panjang dia punya riwayat hidup tu lah. Ha, okay. So, mostly homospores and few are heterospores. Ini ada dua types of spores. And the fertilization still dependent on water. So, characteristics of pteridophyte some more. It lives in damp and shady places. And the size are a bit larger than bryophytes. Masa besar sikit lah. Nampak kalau kat tapak tangan ni, dia besar sikit. Okay. So, plant body has true roots, stems and leaves. So, kita dah nampak dah daun dia mana, stem dia mana, roots dia yang mana. Ha, okay. So, produce flagellated sperms, also called enterozoids. Example is Dryopteris sp. Okay. So, um, 
Thiam Pteridophyta pula, Directoris SP ni tadi. Uh, for example, it has mature fronds. We can call it leaves. And produce reproductive structures called sporangium. So, below are the fronds. Yang ini ya. Front ni lah. Okay. So, dia macam daun macam tu lah. Okay. So, bawah, belah bawah front tu. Kalau kamu nampak, dia ada benda ni. Ha, ini dipanggil sebagai sorus. Okay. Kalau plural dia sorai lah. So, sorai are protected by tiny cover covers. Inducium, this one. So, whenever uh, it is ready for uh, pollination, dia akan pecah dan dia akan keluarkan spore sila. Alright. So, next is genosperm, the third uh, group uh, in kingdom plantae. So, it has simple vascular tissue, still simple. Ada xylem, ada phloem, tapi hanya hanya ada trakit dengan C-tube sahaja. And, of course, it has roots, stems and leaf lah. So, kita dah nampak beza dia. And this one has exposed seeds. Ha, so now, kalau tadi untuk bryophyte dengan pteridophyte, it has no seed. Dia ada spore. Kalau ini dah mula ada seed, tapi seed dia not enclosed within ovary. Dia exposed. Okay. The sporophyte generation is dominant. Okay, kalau kamu perasan setakat ni, kalau pteridophyte yang group yang kedua tadi tu, sporophyte dah mula dominant. Hanya yang first group tadi tu yang gametophyte dia dominant. Okay, so itu ingat eh. So, gametophyte remain attached to sporophyte and gametophyte depends on sporophyte for nutrients. Okay, so untuk pteridophyte tadi, dia independent, hanya bergantung pada untuk attachment sahajalah. Kalau yang ini, dia bergantung pada sporophyte, gametophyte is bergantung pada sporophyte untuk attachment dan juga makanan. Okay, so it is heterosporous. Kalau kamu ingat, untuk pteridophyte, dia ada homosporous dan juga heterosporous. And untuk fertilization for the gymnosperm, less dependent on water. Kalau kamu still ingat, the other two, dia bergantung pada air untuk fertilization. Okay. So, characteristics of gymnosperm, it has larger than, uh, it are larger than pteridophyte. Dia dah besar lah. Kalau perasan dia akan makin, makin besar, makin besar, makin besar. And fertilization less dependent on water, mostly by wind. Okay. And it also have flagellated sperm, tapi less common lah. And... Involve the formation of pollen tube to deliver the sperm cells. Ha, so, if you still remember pollen tube yang kita belajar SEM 1, uh, chapter 9 hari tu. Uh, so, example of the genus sperm are pinus sp, woody plants, trees. So, the leaves are needle shaped, covered with thick cuticle untuk mengelakkan dehydration, uh, transpiration berlaku. So, sunken stomata. So, leaves are in clusters of 5, uh, 2 to 5 needles. Uh, okay. And monoecious, which means male and female dia on same plant. Okay, and it reprodu uh, reproductive structures dia adalah cone. Ha, ni lah cone dia. So, female woody cones protect the seeds. Ha, so, this one ni cone dia. So, ini semua adalah seed dia lah. Ha, so, male cone smaller than the female cone. So, here is the male cone. Ha. So, untuk the last uh, group in kingdom plantae is angiosperm. It is the largest and most successful phylum in plants. Habitat are uh, very diverse. Kita boleh jumpa kat mana-mana sahaja. And known as flowering plants. And the unique characteristics of angiosperm are complex vascular plants, which means its xylem have trachyte and vessel, and its phloem have sieve tube and companion cell. Well, and it has true root stem and leaves. Macam tadi dah, sama dah. Has seeds but beza dengan genus sperm, dia protected within ovary. Dia tak exposed. And as same goes with the genus sperm, it has sporophyte that are dominant over the gametophyte. Okay, heterospora sama and ni pun sama dengan genus sperm. Fertilization does not depend on water. So, unique characteristics of angiosperm some more is it has flower as reproductive organ dia and it undergo double fertilization lah macam chapter 9 hari tu. So, non-flagellated sperm, dia akan membentuk pollen tube and the seed, kalau kamu ingat yang seed yang kita belajar SAM 1 hari tu tu, it is protected by ovary. Ha, okay. So, fruits help in seed dispersal. So, various dispersal agent lah. Ma, contohnya, pollinating agent tu. Uh, you can say wind, you can say water, you can say animals, and you can say human also lah. Boleh bertindak sebagai pollinating agent. And classification of angiosperm is divided into phylum magnoliophyta ataupun antophyta. For example, is hibiscus rosa sinensis. Uh, ni macam cara kamu nak tulis tau. Okay. You have to underline, two underline saja, bukannya asing-asing. Okay. 
So the last learning outcome for the 1.5 is describing the evolutionary relationship among the groups. So as you can see, the many colonies on the land, we can divide the plants into non-vascular and vascular. So within the non-vascular, examples are mosses, which is for example the Polytrichum aspigan, and it has non-vascular plants, okay, and it has no true roots, no true stems, if you see, remember lah. And selain daripada yang non-vascular tu, which is the vascular, yang banyak-banyak lagi tu, kita boleh klasifikasikan lagi kepada yang ada seed dan juga yang tak ada seed. Yang tak ada seed, okay, for example, dia ferns and uh, diopteris tu kan. Okay, so dia adalah seedless and vascular plants. Tapi, dia hanya simple vascularization, which means the xylem does not have, apa tadi, dia hanya ada trachit sahaja. Kalau untuk flowworm, dia hanya ada uh, sieve tube sahaja. Okay, so uh, selain daripada yang seedless plant, dia ada seed lah. Okay, yang plants yang ada seed, kita boleh bahagikan pula. Okay, uh, kepada the gymnosperm dengan angiosperm. Uh, okay, so gymnosperm which is the non-flowering plants. So pollen and naked seeds are not protected by ovary and flow for the flowering plants which is angiosperm, its flowers are for the reproductive structures and the seeds are protected by ovary to form the fruit. Uh, so, this is the evolutionary, evolution of plants. Daripada most simple sampailah the most complex. So, dia adalah peringkat-peringkat dia daripada simple punya, uh, daripada tak ada vascular, ada simple vascular, simple vascular, complex vascular. Uh, daripada spore, spore, seed, seed. Okay, so yang seed ni pula, daripada seed ni ada yang tak protected, yang ini protected. So, this is the evolutionary relationship among the groups.